My name will burn me like looking at monkeys and stroking animals. Hello and welcome back to Stindy Games. It's been a long time, but we're finally coming back to the series that kinda started it all. And the game we're playing today is Let's Build a Zoo. The name tells me it's a game about zoo management. However, the pictures here tell me it's a game about breeding elephants with hawks and teaching tigers to shoot snakes out of their mouths at children. So I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, but let's jump in game and see what this is about. Now I've quickly gone through the tutorial, so you don't have to. And uh, let's start ourselves a new zoo. Boom, and so here we go. New task. Visit the management office. Select the management office. So the game begins with this big empty space that has so much possibility laid out in front of you. This is basically what will become your zoo. This big empty mess of dirt. The game's pretty simple. Your job is to create an appealing zoo that gets customers to come in. You have a ticket office, you have to map them around, you put down roads, enclosures, support buildings, you basically run a zoo. The whole game is run on task systems that kind of dictate your flow of gameplay. We start with the management office up here and we select our first task, which is basically to click on the office. Pretty simple. All kinds of requests end up here and I know you will want to keep on top of them. Try viewing a new task now, okay. Well, let's try this. Build enclosure. Okay. Kathleen, the investor, wants us to build an enclosure. Obviously an enclosure is a place to put animals. So let's get going. We'll come out of the management office and click on the build button here on the left. And this is where we get access to all of the buildings that we're gonna put down in the game. They range from enclosures, shops, Facilities, amenities, floor tiles, subways, nature, signboard, decoration, light, bench, farm, factories, and water. Now, like I said, it's tiered progression, and all of this is hidden behind putting down first the basic things. Now, unlike Planet Zoo, where every single animal needs a separate enclosure, this game kind of encourages you to build one of each type of enclosure. At the moment, we have concrete and grass, but what the game really wants you to do is create a nice, big grass enclosure to put all of your animals in. And that's as simple as dragging four lines to make a square. Now, I don't think you have to make a square. Let's try and make a weird shape. Yeah, you can make a weird shape as well. We're not going to do that. We're going to go with a square because squares are safe. And there we go. Now we have a grass enclosure ready to fill up with animals or whatever we want to do. Well, no, we want to do animals. We can't really put anything else in an enclosure. Unless you put like dragons or something, but I don't think the game has dragons. Built, okay, and the cost per tile is $110. The game operates on a currency system where you gain cash for people to come visit your zoo, and then you spend that cash on an enclosure. Wait, what, did we not build that? Here we go, let's try again. There we go, I think I made it a bit bigger this time, but you know. But that's fine. Oh right, yeah, so we put the gate down on the left and that creates the enclosure. Now we have an enclosure, we can start putting animals in there. Boom. G'day, I have a gift for you. Visit me in my zoo. This guy wants us to go to Australia to visit his zoo. No sweat. And it's down here, obviously, in Australia. Where else would it be? Oh, struth, mate. We had an unexpected boost in our rabbit population. Oh, he's going to give us rabbits. That famous Australian animal that we desperately crave in the zoo. I mean... Honestly, I don't really think that rabbits are much of a headliner, but we're going to say okay, because I mean, can't argue with this guy. And we put the rabbits in the enclosure, boom, two rabbits will be delivered shortly. This person will have a new trade task after this, complete four trades with Cuba Zoo. Well, I guess we meet Cuba later. Okay, so we've got two animals, the investor says it's time to open our gates. I'm going to put down some paths, so the guests have somewhere to actually walk. So aside from getting guests into your zoo, it's great to just follow the tasks as they appear. It gives you a clear direction to go with your zoo, and for now we're going to open the zoo and perhaps get our next task. Oh, news report, new zoo opened. Welcome to, what do we even call our zoo? I can't remember. Something inspirational, I'm sure. Oh, these rabbits go meep. There we go, $5. Money well spent to see two rabbits. 
Now rabbits are actually really savage and brutal animals. And this is one of those quirks of nature. Sometimes you have an animal that looks, on paper, very cute. But the truth is, behind the scenes, they're actually depraved psychopaths. Like a quokka. Its resting face is smiling, but behind those eyes lie the heart of a killer. Anyway, these guys are loving the rabbits, which is good news for us. So when do we get our next task? Oh, well, we've got some things we can manage up here in the top left. So we can build a shop. Okay. Build a shop to start earning revenue from your visitors. Okay. And... Oh, what's this? Research grant. Critical choice. So throughout the game you get quests that hit you instantly, and you have to make a choice there and then. And this is to build a research hub. Eh, pretty simple. Let's do it. So go down to build. Where's research hub? Facilities. Research hub. And we'll put it out of the way up here next to the management office. Why not? Hire a researcher. Anne. And we're good to go. We can also buy a storeroom. Let's do that. And hire a storekeeper. Oh no, this is, a, this is an animal keeper. So the storeroom is where your zoo stores all of the food for its animals. And I think that might be very important later on. So moving through the tasks, our next one is to do some research in the research hub. So if we click on the research hub and go to... Oh, that's the storeroom. Oh, what is in the storeroom? Right. Rabbit food. And it looks like this automatically refills. Anyway, the research center. Boom. This is the research screen. The employees of your research hub work tirelessly to earn points that you can use to unlock new buildings and bonuses. Try unlocking some research now, sweet. So basically you earn research over time. We've got one and as the game goes on, you'll get more and more points. You use those points to unlock different squares on a grid that maps out. And research costs go up. So at the moment, all of these cost one research point. But if we, for example, unlock animal enrichment, boom, very cool. You can see the whole grid is opened up to us now. And the next bit of research, bins, costs three research points. And if we want to get nurseries, we have to go through desert enclosure and then get nurseries. None of this is especially simple. So we'll come out of it for now and let our research points accrue in the background. Boom. So what does our enclosure need? Let's take a look at it. The animal button up here says that we need water and enrichment for our enclosure. So we click on the enclosure and yeah, let's add like a water basin. The water basin has to be within range of one of these pumps. Luckily enough, ours is. Amazing. Then come out of that. And we'll add, I think, some enrichment as well. Turns out rabbits love chasing balls. Who doesn't, right? And there are no requirements for where this has to go, so we'll just put it in the corner. A small ball. Boom. Helps to improve your animal's lifestyles. What's life without a bit of entertainment? Well, I don't know. I keep a ball close to me at all times, just in case I get bored. So that's our animals taken care of. They have zero needs. But there is still one need down here on the structures thing, and it is the shop, of course. We got distracted earlier and we never built that. So let's go down here and find a shop. There is a shop tab. And we can build vending machines, or we can build gift stands. Now I feel like perhaps a gift stand is a cool idea. So at the end of every in-game day, the game saves, which is also a great chance for the game to catch you up on how your business is done. Things haven't been too hot for us because we've apparently lost $165. I think that is because we spent a lot of money on buildings, and we haven't collected any bonuses from doing these tasks. So let's jump into the next day. New task proving grounds. We're up and running. Reach 25 total customers. Small performance bonus. Well, all right, hot diggity dog. New task storeroom. Can't believe your zoo has opened up here. Build a storeroom. We've already done that. Amazing. Hire a janitor. Okay. So to hire members of staff for your zoo, you have to click on the ticket office for some reason. But I mean, sure, why not? The only one that we can hire at the moment is a janitor. So we begin to search for applicants. And this is weirdly in depth. When we go to recruit, we can kind of open this job for people to apply. And it looks like with research, we can unlock things like using social media and job portal websites to advertise our job. Unfortunately, we're still pretty basic bitches. So we've only got the basic admin cost. Anyway, apply changes. 
And with that running, in the background, we've got one job posting and uh, hopefully we'll get an applicant or two in the days to come. A janitor's pretty important though. We're gonna need somebody to pick up after all of these disgusting guests. Oh man, they're filthy. Welfare report. Ah, uh, yeah, so your animals will, you know, need to be treated right. And periodically, you're gonna get one of these welfare reports that either gives you um, a good grade or a bad one. C is pretty middle of the line though, so we don't have a bonus either way. No penalty and no bonus. Now you don't have to just be a good zoo. You can be an evil zoo, which sounds really weird. Who is gonna want to mistreat animals? That's a horrible, horrible thing to do. However, the game does allow you to do that if you wanna do it, which is fair enough, right? I mean, different strokes for different folks. Anyway, we got distracted because we do still have to build a shop. We're gonna build a gift stand and we're gonna put it, where are we gonna put it? Where have we got space for this? Let's put it near the start of the zoo here. There we go. And we have to hire someone to work there, of course. And how about a hot dog shop opposite? Yeah, looks good to me. And hire a hot dog man. Now we're gonna put some floor tiles in between the two. How do you delete these shrubs? Is there a way we can do that? There we go. Shrubs deleted. And we'll put down gray bricks, keeping with the theme. And there we go. Access to the hot dog stand granted. Amazing. So we have a hot dog stand. What we don't have is a drink stand. So we're gonna need to put down maybe a vending machine for drinks. Drinks and snacks, sounds good to me. Visitors get thirsty, they want some drinks. All right, we need, we need to put down a place in to get their Mountain Dew and their Tizer. Oh man, Tizer, can you guys remember Tizer? That red kind of, what did Tizer even taste like? Anyway, right, yeah, shops. Maybe we could research a drinks shop actually. We've only got three research points. When that comes around, maybe we'll try that. So a drinks vending machine, let's put this well, next to the hot dog stand makes sense. And a snack vendor over here next to the gift shop. Perfect. Now, is it me or is this zoo slightly off center? One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh my God, they've given us an off center zoo. Literally unplayable. Well, okay, we've kind of ticked all the boxes. Let's go and see what our tasks are now. Oh, amazing, we've got 25 visitors. So we've completed that. Pretty sweet. Oh, new task. Get 100 visitors. Okay, that's a bit more challenging. Animal Picture Club, get five animals. Right, yeah, so this game isn't about a new enclosure for every single type of animal, like other games, for example, Planet Zoo. No, instead you're kind of encouraged to cram different types of grass animals into the same enclosure, and the same for other types of enclosures. We're gonna rescue a couple more rabbits because we need them to breed, basically. Let's get a girl rabbit and a boy rabbit. I'm not quite sure how many rabbits we have. I don't know if enclosures dislike like having too many males, you know, but maybe they're cool with that. I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, okay. Ooh. So our first moral dilemma. Like I said, the game has morality. Up here, you see this morality tab. You can either be a good zoo owner or a bad zoo owner. And each actually has their benefits. I guess it's kind of like choosing Jojo Mart or the community center, but yeah. We're gonna look at this then. So what does this say? The lost puppy. A man has lost his dog. Do we wanna A, disguise the dog as a lion and use it on display? That would be amazing, bringing people in to look at a lion that's actually a dog. So cheap, so amazing. Now this must be a big dog if it looks like a lion. Or do we reject it and uh, spend some money to help the owner find his dog? Oh, it's gotta be that one. I wanna be a good zoo owner. I mean, can you imagine if you lose your puppy and then you go to the zoo one day and see him dressed up as a lion. Mixed opinions on that. Surely he'd get eaten by the, other, by the other lions. So yeah, here we go. Your choices matter, good or bad. And certain buildings and uh, technologies and, and, and things are locked behind being either good or evil. So there you go. Now it's really only a good idea to build down enclosures once you have animals to put inside them because otherwise you get a horrible notification that says, hey, we, uh, we don't have any animals in this enclosure. And it's kind of pointless because we don't have any animals unlocked yet apart from grass animals. I'll show you what I mean there. We'll put an exactly the same sized concrete enclosure down this side. Not quite exactly the same size because this is a slightly off-center zoo, it turns out. Or oh, you can zoom out. I wonder if you can make your zoo even bigger. Maybe you can get more space. Maybe that, that, you must be able to get more space. That makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? 
So how big is this enclosure? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom, mischief managed. We're gonna put some paths in. Also, we're gonna put some paths around the manager's office as well. Get this stuff possible to go to. It looks like the guests don't really care about paths. They walk wherever they damn well please. So, a bin. Where are we gonna put a bin? We've got different types of bins. Green or giraffe? I like the giraffe bin. And we're going to put one right in the middle of things. So there's no excuse now for not being able to find a bin. And of course, we can go and see if we've got a janitor applying for the job yet. So park staff, janitor. Oh, we've got three applicants. That's amazing. Great stuff. So let's look at our three applicants. We've got Andrea. Hi, my name is Andrea. I just finished a 10-year stretch for shooting up a zoo, so I have valuable experience. Bring on round two. Wilburn. My name Wilburn, me like looking at monkeys and stroking animals. And Leopoldo. Future boss, Leo here. I would like to apply to the position of janitor for your zoo. I've always dreamed of being a zoo, and this position gets me one step closer to realizing that dream. They all want the same salary, and they're all basically the same rating. So who do we trust most? Well, I trust Andrea the most, so yeah. Oh look, you can see, no, each one of them has different stats. So no politeness, work ethic and energy high, job satisfaction low. What about Wilburn? Ooh, he's got worse stats. And then Leopoldo. Oh, Leopoldo's just a massive, massive waster. Okay, we're gonna get Andrea. She's got the best stats for sure. And we'll hire at her at market rate. We could pay her even more, and we could pay her even less. I'm not quite sure. Oh look, that changes their stats slightly, not massively. Boom. Okay, what else do we need to do then? Let's take a look at our tasks. We've got a janitor. No sweat. Boom. Next up, oh, birth. Oh, look at this. So our rabbits have had a baby. We've got April and Minnie here. Is April a boy's name? Sure. For rabbits, it can be. And then Kira is the baby they've given birth to. Now, if we go to the world map, you can see we've got a couple of zoos here. We've got London Zoo and they want to trade a rabbit for geese. Well, that sounds amazing. And then Australia Zoo down here want to trade a snake for whatever those are, dingoes? Dingoes, oh, nice. Watch out, babies, here comes a dingo. So we've selected our new brown rabbit, which is the baby, and I believe we can already trade this guy for geese. So let's click the button, and boom. Oh, yeah, London Zoo is going to give us a male and a female goose. Whoo, amazing. So again, we're going to put them in the grass enclosure because if you click on the concrete enclosure that we have over here, it says they don't like it. They're not matched to it. You can force them into it, but it's not very cool. So business is good. Let's go and spend some research points. So we have nine research points and as you get further down the tree, things become a bit more expensive. Oh yeah, as you see, look, this is a purple technology which means you need to be an evil zoo. But it looks like it's a food processor where we can turn pigs into bacon. Oh yeah. Not a vegan zoo, this one. A desert enclosure would be useful to have. I feel like we're gonna want that at some point. Also a nursery, use selective breeding to discover new animal types. That sounds amazing, cool. Oh, no way. Is this how you get the elusive elephant hawk? Or a tiger that shoots snakes? That sounds fantastic. So we're waiting on a couple of things. One of them is for our new geese to be delivered. I don't think they're gonna be delivered until the next day. And as you can see at the top here, it's gonna be a long, t oh no, here they are. Oh, wait, what, they're not geese. I've just been shortchanged. Oh no, so these are the animals that we originally bought, the rabbits. So let's put it on max speed and wait for tomorrow when we hopefully get some geese. Animal Keeper Zoning. What the hell is this? So yeah, as you can see, the game encourages you to have larger habitats with multiple types of animals and things inside those habitats. So let's turn down the speed. Oh, it's Linda. Linda wants us to buy land. There we go, I knew it. You can expand your zoo into the rest of this zone. So how do we do this? Oh, we got five animals as well, so we've completed that task. Amazing. Land for sale. So I imagine you just click on the land for sale and then say buy. How much does it cost? Oh, there's a VIP. We'll go and check him out in a sec. Yes, give me the land. Oh yeah, look at the size of our zoo now. This is amazing. Okay, slow it down. Where is this VIP? Let's take a look around. Which one of these mother truckers looks like a VIP? Is it Misty? 
She's real hungry. No, I don't think so. Is it Joseph, black market dealer? What the hell? <gasps> oh, look at this. We can click on the NPCs and we can buy and sell animals. That's amazing. So obviously buying and selling black market animals is illegal. I mean, that's why we've got coronavirus, right? So we can choose to either buy or sell animals, which is evil, or report this person to the cops. Yeah, oi, get out of my zoo. Doing so may damage your relationship with this trader. Well, I don't care about that. I'm gonna get some good rep. And this guy's gone to jail. Wow. Now we have a lot more space to work with in our zoo. And I like the idea of just having centrally all of the enclosures in the middle. And then along the bottom have shops and more decoration and other things up top. But at the moment, I'm not quite sure what else you build. You have enclosures for animals, you have shops and you have research buildings. But what else do you have? Let's pause the game and have a look. We definitely need a toilet and we're going to put the toilet right down here. So we could start to decorate. We could put down a zoo map. That sounds amazing. These will reduce bad behavior and stop customers getting lost. Yeah, well, let's put a zoo map right at the start of the zoo. Okay, here we go. Looking much better so far. What about the drinks shop? Let's put down a drink shop as well. The slushy shop. Now, this is quite a compact building as well, which is pretty handy for us. Oh, wow. This guy wears a slushy on his head. That's daring. Oh, man, can you imagine the brain freeze? Oh, amazing. Everything's shaping up pretty fantastically. Okay, so our guys, we have another task. We need a bench in our zoo. Where are we going to put this bench? I think the opposite side of where this zoo map is. We're going to put a bench. Let's see if we can find that bench. Is it floor? Is it garden? No, here we are. Benches. Yeah, it looks good to me. Can we put down grass? Oh, we can. Oh, amazing. Yeah, that's the ticket. And the grass is free, apparently. It costs zero. Let's get this whole place covered in grass, because I hate this dirt floor that we've got going on at the moment. Beautiful. Oh man, already it looks a thousand times better. This is great. This is fantastic. Ding ding ding. Task complete. 100 visitors. And this should unlock our next task. Oh yeah, two days passed since previous quest was completed. Okay, so we've got to wait two days and then we get our next task. But for now, guys, I mean, this has been a really cool look at Let's Build a Zoo. It's an adorable pixel art zoo management slash building simulator. It's got some really cool features. And despite the simplistic art style, which I actually really enjoy, I do think this game has a lot of potential. I'm kind of keen to continue playing it. So if you want to see me play more of this, let me know in the comment section. If you want to see a different game or a specific other game, do let me know that as well. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care.